Hello friends, uh, today I thought I'd share with you how I earn a living as a full-time musician and music producer. And yeah, for those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Stevie B. Uh, this channel is an exploration of all things musical, uh, but today I'd like to chat about uh, how I pay the rent. So let's break down my income streams from uh, lowest to highest. Starting in very last place is selling MIDI packs online. So full disclosure, uh, I make very little money uh, from my little side hustle, otherwise known as productionmusictools.com. Uh, but you know, surprisingly, I actually get quite a bit of traffic on this website. And uh, you know, considering that I totally suck at promoting it, I usually get a couple of sales every month, which is great because it pays for the cost of having the website. The thing is, you know, most of the products that I have on here are for free. It's still very much a work in progress. You know, I want at least uh, 10 or 15 MIDI and sample packs ready to go before I start promoting it heavily. But I think that there's a lot of potential for it to grow. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of uh, taking the time to build it up. So if you are looking for some freebies, uh, feel free to take a peek at some of the cinematic packs that I have. Um, also the Logic Pro composing templates. So next up is Patreon. Uh, Patreon is a small but very meaningful uh, stream of income for me. Uh, I really enjoy diving a little deeper into the production process and uh, getting a little bit more uh, technical in the videos that I make for my patrons. I also love listening to the music uh, that my patrons send me and you know, offering up my guidance and feedback where I can. I think Patreon is a great way for artists to provide a little extra value to their fans and uh, you know, it ends up being a nice little tip at the end of the month. So sending a big shout out to my Patreon crew, of course, uh, I really appreciate your guys' support. So number five is live performances. Uh, and funny enough, this would have ranked a lot higher uh, not too long ago, but um, obviously COVID is pretty much all but obliterated my performing revenue over the last year and a half. These days, I'm starting to play some gigs, you know, here and there. And uh, while the income isn't very substantial, it's usually, you know, like a couple hundred bucks a gig, which helps pay the bills. But uh, for the most part, I'm still patiently waiting uh, for this to kind of pick back up to where it used to be. And, you know, if I'm being totally honest, uh, I was playing so many gigs pre-COVID that, you know, uh, when the world just kind of sort of shut down, uh, all of a sudden, it actually was a nice little break for the first little while, but I definitely miss it at this point. And, uh, you know, I'd love to get back in the saddle and start playing again. So teaching has surprisingly grown to be a fairly substantial source of income for me in the last couple of years, especially. And it's funny because I really never set out to be a teacher. It just sort of grew into a thing over, over time. So I put an ad out on Craigslist years ago uh, as a mobile uh, guitar teacher. And the idea was that I would uh, travel to students' home uh, for, for lessons as a matter of convenience, right? And uh, the idea actually proved to be uh, really appealing to busy parents who were looking for music lessons for their kids, but uh, didn't quite have you know a lot of time on their hands to drive them around to lessons. So I had a couple of young students at first, uh, most were in the uh, 10 to 13 age range initially, and before I knew it, their parents were recommending me to other parents and I had a small handful of dedicated students. I realized quickly that grouping the students together in classes uh, made a lot more sense in terms of time management. And these days I have about uh, eight students currently, uh, which only takes up a few hours of my week. With everything else going on at the moment, uh, that's about as much as I can handle right now. So I never would have imagined that library music uh, would would grow to be such a staple of my monthly income. And if you've been uh, following this channel for a while now, you know that it's a subject that I talk about a lot. The music licensing industry is fascinating to me. And you know, it's, it's been a pretty wild ride since I uploaded my first couple of tracks to Audio Jungle a few years back. I still believe um, that there's a ton of potential for growth here. And in many ways, I, I feel like I'm still just getting started. Uh, there's a ton of libraries out there, many of which I have yet to explore. I'm basically active currently on about six different non-exclusive royalty-free libraries at the moment, and I usually make enough to cover the rent every month. If it weren't for library music making up for the loss of my performance income during COVID, I, I really honestly don't know what I would have done. I've been really fortunate in that regard. And you know, the, su the success that I've had with music licensing is uh, essentially the reason why I started this YouTube channel, um, as well as the Production Music Academy. I've always kind of felt that, you know, that if I can do it, then anyone can do it. So uh, that leads me to number two. So I should say that in terms of 
uh, total overall lifetime earnings, Library Music definitely takes the uh, second place position, but uh, I thought I'd put this at number two, uh, the number two spot because, well, the last six months have just been interesting. Uh, you know, I've put quite a bit more time and energy into developing music production courses than I have, um, you know, towards uploading music onto libraries. So that being said, my monthly average income from libraries has taken a bit of a dip. Uh, but thankfully, that was pretty much supplemented by uh, selling courses online. And I feel really good about shifting my focus towards course creation as of late. Uh, there's a real personal connection there for me. Uh, it just feels really great to know that uh, they've been helpful and, you know, I've got a lot of positive feedback on them. So uh, I really couldn't be more stoked with the way that it's all turned out. The courses are, simply put, what I wish I had when I was first dipping my toes into the uh, music licensing world. Uh, I really didn't have a lot of guidance personally, so uh, it's been nice to help others out in that regard. So yeah, big shout out to those of you who have uh, bought a course. And uh, yeah, I am currently in the process of making some more courses, so stay tuned for that. Custom scoring work has always been my bread and butter. Uh, it's my main source of income, and without it, I really wouldn't have been able to quit my job as a full-time barista a few years ago. I've been incredibly lucky to have been hired on some amazing projects. I've worked with some, some great clients. Uh, generally speaking, these jobs pay quite well up front, uh, but they also require, require a lot more work and are often done in a, in a time crunch, so um, they can be stressful. Um, often I'll have to kind of drop everything else that I'm doing and you know, just to get something done in a pinch. Uh, but other times, the, you know, the projects are stretched out over long, long periods of time, um, some longer than a year. Uh, in fact, a, a documentary that I worked on for Patagonia, which is uh, about to be released this month, um, that project took like well over a year to complete. Not all my scoring work has been successful. Um, you know, I've had contracts fall through. Uh, I've been fired from projects before. Uh, these are, I guess, just things that come with the territory as a freelance composer. Uh, but nonetheless, I absolutely love writing music for film and media. Uh, it's something I'm really passionate about and uh, will hopefully continue to do for a long time to come. Okay, guys, that's it for me. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. If uh, pursuing a music career is uh, something that you're after, I really hope that this video has been insightful or inspiring. And uh, by all means, uh, as always, feel free to comment below. Uh, ask any questions you'd like. Happy to get back to all of you. In the meantime, take care and I will see you in the next video. Bye.